Man is forever trying to lay hold of reality with words, only in the end to find mystery rebuking his speech and his syllables swallowed by silence. The problem is not that our minds are not bright enough. The problem lies deeper. Our minds, taken in their conscious surface sense, are the wrong kind of instrument for the undertaking. The effect as a result is like trying to ladle the ocean with a net or lasso the wind with rope. The awe-inspiring prayer of Shankara, the St. Thomas Aquinas of Hinduism, begins with the invocation, O thou before whom all words recoil. Man's mind has been evolved to facilitate his survival in the natural world. It is adapted to deal with finite objects. God, on the contrary, is infinite and of a completely different order of being from what our minds can grasp. To expect man to corner the infinite with his finite mind is like asking a dog to understand Einstein's equation with his nose. This analogy becomes misleading if, pressed in a different direction, it suggests that man can never know the abysmal God. The yogas, as we saw, are roads to precisely such knowledge. <clears throat> But the knowledge to which they lead transcends the knowledge of the rational mind, rising, as it does, to the deep yet dazzling darkness of the mystical consciousness. The only literally accurate description in the, in, of the unsearchable of which man's surface mind is capable is neti, neti. If you go throughout the length and breadth of the universe, saying of everything you can see, and conceive, not this, not this. What remains will be God. <clears throat> Still, words and concepts cannot be avoided. Being the only equipment our, at our mind's disposal, any conscious progress towards God must be made with their aid. Though concepts can never carry the mind to its destination, they can point us in the right direction. Now, this is a quote from this book, Houston Smith, The Religions of Man, quite an influential book in its time. I think it was written in 1954. And he alludes to something in that book, which I think that all theists or all religious people or people who say they believe in God or whatever should um, take heed of. Words don't do it. Um, why do you attempt to describe something which is by very, its very nature indescribable? If you believe in God live your belief. <clears throat> um, don't try to explain it to anybody else. Uh, evangelizing has got to be the stupidest and most pointless waste of mental, spiritual energy I can imagine. And if you ask me, to a certain extent, evangelizing and proselytizing and seeking to convert other people and even to explain your point of view to others is almost a sign of lack of belief. Why would you need to explain to someone else who doesn't want to hear your message? Why would you need to explain to someone what reality itself is when they're not interested? You're either interested or you're not. Um, I think that it's, and not only that, I think that it's somewhat lunatic to actually engage in someone um, who is not interested or is not a theist or doesn't believe um, engage them in your discussion as to what constitutes God, knowing in advance that God is indescribable. Um, in discussing this, theists become their own worst enemies. Um, no matter how you describe God, however you conceive of God, it's going to sound stupid. There's really no way around this problem. And again, I discussed in my previous video the necessity for blasphemy laws, or at least some kind of break on uh, people's um, speculations and reactions to descriptions of God. You can shoot down any description of God if you decide to describe God using words. Any description at all can be sh uh, shot down and made to look really stupid and inadequate. Because unfortunately, any description of God is stupid and inadequate, even if you do believe in God. Um, Houston Smith was a practicing Christian. 
He wrote uh, about all kinds of other religions with an enormous amount of respect, but even he admits you can't talk about it. So why bother? Why bother go out there and uh, going out there and uh, talking about something that is indescribable in the first place? Not only that, as I say, it's a distraction from actually experiencing or living the 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 whole thing of theism. Um, and again, once you decide that you're going to go out there and talk about it with other people, then they're going to take pot shots at you. In the absence of any kind of restraint on our freedom of speech and in our society now, there's virtually nothing that you can't say, uh, or almost nothing, um, <clears throat> then um, you really don't have any way of interacting with people who are by nature almost hostile, or at least knee-jerk dismissive of your point of view. Don't do it. Just live your faith. Now, I know this is kind of stupid, because most of the Christian people that I know actually do exactly that. My wife is a Christian. She knows my beliefs. She simply goes, oh, I guess that's what you think. Oh, well, nothing to do with me. And that's the end of it. Um, I think that most people who actually are comfortable with their own beliefs don't bother to go out and try and engage anybody in any kind of a discussion about it, because they understand that... Um, Language, tools, uh, logic, this kind of thing, don't really tell the whole story. Um, their sort of conception of God is a mixture of the logical and the intuitive and the emotional and the, uh, the spiritual and the numinous and all this kind of thing, all together in a great big huge mass that defies any kind of limitation or description. And they know this. Even if they wouldn't put it in so many words, they know this. The second you go out there and try to sell your idea, you've wandered into a minefield where you yourself have laid almost all of the mines. Um, I cannot be a theist uh, for that very reason, regardless of whatever metaphysical uh beliefs or convictions or positions, I suppose, are more accurate, is a more accurate word, I may or may not hold. Um, I understand that whatever I say uh, is going to sound stupid and, and inadequate. A lot of people have said, well, what the hell do you believe? All you ever do is shoot down everyone else's beliefs. Um, I have very few, in fact, probably no convictions, um, but I have certain... Uh, positions that I've developed over the years that it is, in my own admission, impossible to describe. Uh, not this, not that. Why would I describe something? Why would I describe my own position when I've already told people your own position makes no sense whatsoever? In fact, I'm not even actually saying that. I'm saying why I don't subscribe to that point of view. Um, <clears throat> so I do have positions. I have a large number of positions on things. But I'm cognizant, I suppose, of the fact that um, the picture that I am painting in my own mind of my position, how I perceive or understand or grasp or wrap my head around this reality thing, is not an easy thing to describe. In fact, it may be impossible. So it may be better to describe why you do not accept a certain methodology towards um, dealing with reality as opposed to actually going out there and describing your beliefs. You go public, you're going to be misunderstood. Words don't work after a certain point and the second you go out there if you can't just shut people down for questioning you like you could say in Saudi Arabia if I went out and uh, and uh, decided I was going to ask a bunch of questions about Islam and God and everything like that they can just shut me down uh, now you can't do that uh, here on the net if people can't do that to me if people can't sort of shut me down after I ask a certain number of questions then any idea can be attacked. And if I can go out there and explain my point of view and I can't shut down my critics, anything I say can look stupid, 
can look crazy, can look irrational. Such are the limitations of language. As Mr. Smith said, language can point us in the right direction, can't take us where we ultimately want to go. Theists, take note. <laughs> Thank you.